This was a very, very small courtroom that was just sort of fashioned out of a concrete shed. No walls. Uh, it was open to the outside and had a roof over it. The defendants were in the first two rows of this. And everybody else, you know, was on either side. There were the rows of seats, almost like a church or something. I went to attend the trial of a guy named Mutuari Daniel Kibibi, who was uh, the highest ranking military officer to ever face charges of, uh, of mass rape and crimes against humanity in Eastern Congo. So it was him and 10 of his subordinates all facing trials for a mass rape campaign that happened on the 1st of January in 2011. I think that there's something really intimate and, and personal for the witnesses and for you know, the prosecution and the defense and the defendants themselves to know that they're completely surrounded. They're stripped of their weapons. They're stripped of their rank. They're stripped of all the power that's typically enabled them to, to dominate and violate the, the community. It was hot at that time of the year, and there was no shade outside of the courtroom. People would stay standing outside for nine or ten hours throughout the day. The amount of dedication and interest that, that community members had in observing these proceedings was really astounding. There was a consensus among the people involved that it was better that we conceal their identities, given that the verdicts and stuff were still out. Nothing had been decided yet. Each woman is so different. While their identity is concealed, I find their presence to be really defiant. When they announced the verdicts and they sentenced Mutuari Kabibi to 20 years and his closest aides to long sentences with hard labor, there was a tremendous eruption to see an environment where people are largely uh, defenseless against heavily armed and pretty vicious groups, I think that there was something really empowering for people to be able to witness these guys who ordinarily would brutalize them being sentenced to some kind of serious punishment for their crimes. For the community, I think that there was a a very restorative uh, component to seeing that level of justice. In so many conflicted parts of Africa and places that I've worked before, I think the international perspective tends to lose a bit of the the civilian component of it. There's a lot of talk about the way that civilians are impacted, but oftentimes you don't necessarily see the constructive response that the communities are capable of. I have a lot of belief in people's ability to do things for themselves. And, and while people are sometimes pitted against really you know, formidable challenges, um, they're, they're really capable, when opportunities are given to them, to do pretty extraordinary things.